What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this Cristiano Ronaldo kit swap that I did a couple of days ago. So uh, basically I haven't done any kit swap videos on my channel yet so I thought it'd be uh, something different for you guys, something new to learn and basically just you know it's it's quite a useful technique so if you any of you that I know that some of you own Instagram accounts where you post pictures of players and stuff and some of you do kit swaps and this probably could just help you make them look a little bit more realistic and just a little bit nicer so uh, there are other tutorials out there um, on stuff like this but I just thought I'd make my own version because you know it always helps when you have another person's opinion without further ado let's get straight into it So guys, first things first, what you're gonna to need to do is download this kit swap assets pack that I have made for you. So this is just gonna be um, a, um, a folder of images that are gonna be used in this design. So we have, sorry, we have, um, we have Ronaldo, um, we have the kit that we're going to be using. We have the flag in the background and that's all you need for this basically. So it's not, it's not too intense. You don't need too much for it. It's pretty simple. But a lot of it's just making it look realistic. Really, that's where the time comes in. So basically that's all we need to do. So let's start making our new document. So if you go to a new document, what you need to do is make it Instagram standard size. So 1080 by 1350 will do fine. So after you've done that, what you're gonna need to do is go to your kit swap assets. You can get this picture of Ronaldo. Actually, to be fair, you can drag all of them in. So just drag all of them in and then that should be fine. Uh, and once you've dragged them in, you can sort of uh, turn each layer on and sort of position them where you think they're gonna be. So I'm gonna leave Ronaldo there for now. So what I have done for you, I have already cut out all of the, um, the background and everything. So it's just a PNG. And what I am gonna do is start to cut out his arms. So what you need to do, you need to find two images really that will look very similar to each other. Um, that's the key to this. So then obviously once you put them together, they look fairly realistic. So if you've got two images that are completely different, it's not gonna look great. So uh, the key is to find images that look the same and then you're sort of onto a winner really. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that and now to quickly duplicate this because you're gonna need to duplicate it, what you need to do is click Command J and then you've got a new arm. So if I turn that off, you've got his arm there. So then you go back to the layer, select that and then we're gonna do the same process again for the other arm. So just repeat the process, select around the arm and then you can just selection, okay, and then go Command J. So now I've got two arms. And then obviously we need the head, otherwise it would look a bit weird, wouldn't it, if we didn't have the head? So we're just gonna go through and you can zoom in a little bit for this because obviously this is gonna be sort of the main defining part of the design. Like obviously you need his arms to look right, but the main part of this really is gonna be his head. Because I find when I'm doing kit swaps that these are sort of the hardest um, areas to sort of blend just because obviously you know it's not meant to be he's not meant to be in this kit so it's going to look a little bit weird but we'll get it we'll get there so a lot of this is practice as well you need to keep practicing this because i have only just started doing kit swaps myself because i sort of was a bit intimidated by them at first i didn't really want to um do them because i found them just awkward and and difficult so i just sort of kept away from them but now that i've started actually sort of learning how to do them i found that they're not actually that hard so that's all done we've cut his arms out we've cut his head out so obviously if you had legs as well you would cut those out as well but for this image we don't have any legs well we do we have the shorts but not no legs we've got his body here now this is just a picture of Carl walker as you can see if i turn all the arms off it's just a picture of Carl walker sort of walking in a similar pose as ronaldo arms are a little bit different but don't need to worry about that too much uh, so i've cut his head out and then cut his arms out and then just got rid of them so we've just got the kit and then if i apply the layer mask there you go he's gone so now we need to sort of make this fit our uh, Cristiano. So if we turn these layers on. Now we've got a few things here that may need to be made a little bit bigger. So if we hold all these down, and just make them a smidge a little bit bigger. So now his arms sort of fit the design a little bit better. Now you want all of these to be below the kit layer as well. That's going to be key as well, just to make them look like they're actually going into it, um, into the kit. So as we can see here, it looks a bit rough. So if I do that and uh, bend it a little bit, like that you sort of just got to bend it into place now i'm not going to rush this guys i'm going to take my time with this because i want you guys to get the full experience of sort of how difficult it is but also how easy it is to uh to create some sort of artwork like i've made so we've got that just going to need to rotate a little bit once you've added it in bits like this you will be adding shadows and stuff which will make it look more together um but to start off with it might look a little bit weird like it's looking now um but that's just part of the process so here comes the awkward part so his head obviously doesn't fit um because it's a different size but what we need to do now is we need to convert this to a smart object and then we're going to convert this wow well, the make sure you've got the kit converted to a smart object and what you're going to need to do is go to edit puppet warp 
So once you get to Puppet Warp, you just click this and then obviously there'll be all these lines going across the kit which look a bit weird. So what you need to do with this, you've got to imagine it's like a pin board. So if you click, you add a pin. And then if you select that pin, you move everything. So the idea is to pin back the areas that you don't want to move. So if you go around, pin back the areas that you think are fine, that don't need moving, and then it will stop them from moving once you move other parts of it, basically. So if I go around here, pin this back. Now, the main area we're going to be focusing on is the collar. So if I put a pin here, now I can move this sort of kind of move it up a little bit, but it's not going to it's not going to work greatly. And then if you want to cut it, just hold alt and then go like that. So what we need to do is get this kit and sort of move it in. So I don't know why it's doing this. I think it's because it's got a layer mask on it. So I'm just going to click OK. I'm going to apply this layer mask. So if I convert it to a smart object again, and now I'm just going to do the same again, puppet warp. And now we can sort of start moving areas around. So if I just select all these areas around here, same again, just add in these points just so you don't get the whole design being messed up by these uh, this warp. So we do that. Don't rush this, guys, because this is going to be an integral part of the design and you don't really want to rush it. I'm only doing it fairly quickly just so I can show you. So as you can see, look, now if I move it in, we're sort of getting the desired effect. So if I move this in a little bit, you might have to erase parts of it, parts of the kit, just to make it look a bit more real. But once you actually, you know, if we get it in there, it'll work just nicely. So as you can see, we've pretty much already got the kit sort of where we need it to be. So this one here is not looking great. So I'm just going to move that one down. Just going to add some points here. There we go. So that looks good. Same here. We need to get another bit just pulling this bit across. That's nice. There we go. So as you can see, this is going to look a little bit weird once I zoom out, but it's worth it. Yeah, so right, it looks a little bit weird, doesn't it? Again, we need to move the arms in a little bit. So do that, sort of make them a little bit sort of lower. I want his shoulders to be a bit lower because Ronaldo has got quite a big neck, if I do say so. Um, so you just move bits in, just move them in to fit his sort of body. So you can look at other images of him, which will help you determine like how his body looks when he's in his top. But for now, I think that's good enough. I'm going to click OK with that. Now, as you can see, his head is in the in the shirt. So what we need to do now is need to mask out a little bit um, of where his neck is. So if I select a black and now I put my flow up to 100 percent, I can sort of paint in where he's meant to be. So like so, sort of get rid of this. And then there we go. So as you can see, he is now inside the top. Now, obviously, it doesn't look 100% realistic. It's going to be hard to get that sort of realistic effect with this just because it's not meant to be. It's obviously it's two different images. You're trying to merge them together. You've got to find perfect images to get the perfect merge. So if you want to spend a lot of time looking for images, then be my guest. But obviously, if you just want to do something quick for your Instagram account, you know, just to post something for your fans, then this works just as well. We've got that. We've got him into the top. Now what we're going to do is we are going to group all of this together. Call this Ronaldo. Now I'm just going to go Command J to duplicate this. Turn one of the groups off. This is just in case you mess this up. So then you can convert this to a smart object. And then you've got your Ronaldo. So what we need to do now is we need to add some curve layers. So if I go for a curve and then I'm going to clip and mask it to the design. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this a little bit darker, sort of just so we can make some of the shadows look a bit similar. Now, this isn't all going to be done on this curves layer because obviously it's not meant to be done on the curves layer. Uh, we're going to add a hue saturation, just decrease it to about minus 11, just so again, all the colors start to match a little bit better. And then we're going to add a color balance as well. So these are the three things you're going to need to bring this image together. So I'm going to reduce this to about minus eight, increase this to about plus four and then plus six for the dark blue. As you can see, if I turn these off, it goes to a really bright image. If I turn them on, they're sort of starting to merge together a little bit better. We've got that now. Next thing we need to do is go in and add um, some dodge and burn. So what you're going to need to do, create a new layer. Once you've got your new layer, you're going to go up to edit fill and then you're going to go to 50 percent gray click ok now all you need to do is clip and mask it to ronaldo click overlay on the blending options and then you're going to need to find your dodge and burn tool so dodge and burn tool are over here so this is where dodge and burn are and there's a sponge don't worry about the sponge burn it is for shadows and dodge is for highlights so what we're going to do we're going to select burn leave the exposure on 20 percent and now we can start going in and just drawing in some shadows so obviously you want shadows where his neck is Obviously, just play it by the image that you've got. So just sort of follow those shadows. Um, but obviously, you want a little bit by his neck just because obviously you want it to look like it's actually in the top and it starts to merge it all together. So as you can see now, just going in where the dark areas are, bringing it all together, darkening up areas that are already a little bit dark, but also making sure that they look like they're joining. The main bits to focus on with this are the creases in the top um, and the arms. You want to basically make sure you're getting all those shadows in because once we 
add the camera or filter, it will make it look even more real and it will make it look better. You want it, you want all the shadows to pop because it does make it look more defined. Um, and it just makes it look a bit more cooler. Go with that. Got one here we can pull in and one up here. Not really one up here, but we can sort of make our own one. Just try and follow the top lines because if you start drawing in your own shadows too much, it'll start to look a bit weird. So again here, under his arm, you can sort of make this look a bit darker. Under here, make it look a bit darker, just so his arm looks like a shadow in it a bit. Same here. You want to make bits like that darker. And we go in here and do the same. His hand down here, because it's, you know, not in, in shot. Same here. Darker. And then we've sort of got a nice little bit going on here. So you can darken his hair up a little bit if you want. Face, obviously shadows. And that's pretty much it for the dodge. So you've gone through all the top um, creases. You can do the shorts as well if you want. So like that, that's nice. You can obviously spend more time on this, guys. I'm just sort of going through it quickly just to give you a good idea of what you need to do. Um, darken these areas a lot, makes it look a lot more real. If I zoom out now, okay, turn this off. You can see it's bringing it all together just about. So we can obviously go into here where the shadows are on his top, darken that up a little bit, same here. So like that, that's nice. So now it's looking like a bit more of a complete design. Got a little bit more going on. Now we're gonna do a switch to the dodge tool. Now the dodge tool will add highlights and it will basically, you know, give you an extra bit of um, stability. If we go to the highlights, so the highlighted areas like this, we're just gonna go across, sort of highlight it, and then uh, just bring it into focus a little bit more. So like here, just look at the bits that are a bit lighter, go over them. It's gonna be probably opposite the shadows because that's where obviously all the highlights are gonna be. Go like that, and that's nice. You can obviously do a little bit on the top, um, and then his head will be a good one to do it on. So pick out the highlights on his head, sort of just go through and uh, pick them out. Once I've done with this, you'll see that it's basically uh, gonna bring the whole thing together. So I think that's good. Add a little bit on the hands. All these little things will make it look better once you've finished, but mainly focus on the creases in the top. That is the main bit. So if I go and turn this layer off now, you can see it's completely changed it. It's completely brought the shadows out, made it look more realistic, and just basically made it a better design overall. So we can't really ask for much more than that. We've pretty much done with the uh, image. All we need to do is add some blur to it and then we're done with the image. Then we're gonna make the background and bring it all together. Okay guys, so we've got the image done. What we're gonna do now is convert this to a smart object again. That's all done. And now what we need to do is add a motion blur to this. So if we go to blur, motion blur, it should be there. Click motion blur and what you need to do is make this a 45 degree angle and only put the distance to six. So once you've done that, click okay. And then you need to select this layer mask down below. Select the layer mask. Get a brush, get a big soft brush probably, would be best. Um, put the flow down to about, uh, no, put it, leave it 100%. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna change this to black and go through and just sort of paint back in the middle. And you want the edges of his arms to be blurred and the, probably the top of his top, so like that. You wanna add a little bit of motion blur because this will bring it together again once he's walking in in the background, which we'll do now. So if I turn that on, you can see that he's gonna be walking into it and it's a bit of motion blur just adds that extra added effect that we need. So if we select our background, now we're just gonna move this into place to about there. Now I've already added a 10%, 8% uh, blur on this. So feel free to play around with that. I usually add 10%, so about 10, that looks good. And now we've got him in the shot. So what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna make him a little bit smaller, I think. So a little bit smaller, so about there, I would say it's good. And now what we're gonna do is add some smoke. So if we go to new layer, we're gonna get our brush tool. Now you can you can use um, a soft brush for this. It won't look as good. I've got smoke brushes already installed, which I paid for off different people, but there are free ones you can find online or you can go on YouTube and you know watch tutorials on how to make smoke brushes. So feel free to do that. I'm just gonna use my smoke brush because that's all I have at this moment in time. Um, don't know where my smoke brush is though, that, that would help. Um, so now we can sort of go in, start adding some smoke to the background, bring the opacity up a little bit. This doesn't need to be anything major. You can sort of play around with it and add as much as you want. So you add a, a white layer first and then you need to go and pick out. So use your eyedropper tool, pick out a blue that's on his top. And then what we're gonna do is add some blue smoke in as well, just because that'll, you know, again, bring it all together a little bit more. So we've got that in there there. Convert that to a smart object for your smoke. Add a Gaussian blur to it. So we want to add a Gaussian blur. So you can make this about, I don't know, 4% just to m make it look more like smoke. And then what we're gonna do is make a screenshot and go into camera or filter. So if we go command option, shift E, make a screenshot. Now you've got your screenshot. Now we're going to camera or filter. And now we're gonna sort of bring this whole thing together that we've created. So we're gonna go to basic. So exposure, you wanna boost up a lot, uh, contrast, bring it up to about 40. Highlights and shadows, you wanna bring to minus 30 and plus 30. I do this for pretty much every design now just because it gives you a nice balance. Um, 
of what you, you in your design texture bring it up so it brings out the top a little bit more see the motion blur is looking nice now obviously i could have i could have cleaned up a little bit where this arm is but obviously once you're doing it yourself you can clean it up i've already done this so i'm just doing it quick clarity bring that up about to 30 dehaze about plus 15 vibrance you can bring down if you want i'm going to bring it up to about 10 and then saturation to about 10 now, as you can see from this design he is looking very orange so i'm going to add a little bit of dark blue and i'm going to go down to color grading nope now I'm not going to get color mixer and go to saturation where it's orange, reduce the orange. See, it just brings it down a bit, makes it look a bit more realistic because he obviously isn't going to be that orange in real life. Curves, you can again add these in as you go, make a nice little S, S curve, detail, sharpen it up about 100, maybe not 100, about 40. Noise reduction about 13, color as well. 13 14 that's fine now color mixer you can obviously make this a little bit more blue um color grading you don't really need to worry about this but you can obviously you can you can use blues if you want um that's completely up to you don't want it that blue though because that would look a bit weird um let's go for this that's some nice little blue in there there we go so we don't want too much of this just just enough to add that extra added effect basically so we've got that in. Now we add a little bit of grain, so about 20 grain, and then a nice little vignette. We'll bring the corners in here, and that is pretty much it, guys. So there's one thing I probably would reduce, maybe the contrast a little bit, and bring the exposure up a little bit. But that looks really nice. It probably nearly looks better than my original. So we've got the nice little blur on his hands and his bottom, but you've got his face there coming through. He looks like he's in the top, so it works. Um, you can bring the saturation up a little bit as well. You can use yellow as well if you want but I've used dark blue just because I like the colder effect it has. I think it looks better. And then if we go from this to this, you can obviously see we've brought out a lot in the, the, the uh, design. It looks pretty real to me. Um, and you know, it works. So you have that effect that it's he's, he's in the frame. Um, he's in that kit and he's moved to Manchester City. So I think this is a really useful technique, guys. So hopefully you have sort of... Um, learned something from this and you know let me know in the comments if you want to see more because I, I would happily do a basketball one and you know some other kit swaps because i think they are useful i've only just started learning them personally myself and i find them really helpful so obviously it's up to you what you want to hit uh, what you want to see let me know in the comments down below hit that like button if you did enjoy and uh yeah i'll be back for another video soon thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you next time